Good afternoon. It is 1 o'clock on Monday, June 24th, and we are here for the regular trustee meeting. Uh, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an agenda before us. Do we have any additions, modifications, or alterations? Uh, board, under old business, um, under tornado update, I'd like to add uh, debris management agreement. And under information technology, uh, before this bi-weekly, I'd like to add network switch. That's all I have. Okay. Do you want me to remove the minutes? Remove the minutes yeah. until yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to do. Uh, we'll table the minutes until next meeting when we have a full board. Hearing no other changes or amendments. Oh, and then I make them. We can just do this first. No, do the agenda. And then oh. Oh, okay, that's what I was talking about. Hearing no um, other changes or am amendments to the agenda, I would move for it to be uh, approved as written and. And amended? Second. Ms. Lawless? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to excuse Mr. Kretz from today's regular trustee meeting. Second. Ms. Lawless? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. I make a motion to accept the general ledger report in the amount of $397,735.04 for the 619-19 payroll. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. I make a motion to accept the payment listing report in the amount of $340,701.68 for warrants through 619 of 19. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Uh, we are going to table the minutes till next meeting when we have a full board. And then uh, on to pre scheduled speakers. Thank you, Board. Uh, today I have um, from FEMA, uh, Faye Cooley, and from the Small Business Administration Public Affairs Specialist, Julie Gare. Um, they're here to talk about the efforts of both agencies here in the community uh, after the tornado. Hello. Thank Hello. you all for letting me speak to you today. We are glad to see you. Yes. We were glad to be here. Sorry it's under these circumstances. Um, my name is Faye Cooley and I'm with Disaster Survivor Assistance and what that is in the FEMA world is we go door to door conducting outreach uh, to uh, the affected areas to speak with folks, get them registered. We take an iPad with us and we register them at their door if they would like to. Uh, we can also provide updates and inquiries later on after the registration process is in play a little while. Um, we explain the process of um, the inspector coming and what happens after that and going forward. Um, our main objective is to get people registered, get them in our system, and the process started for their recovery. Um, the main uh, way to register is to call our 1-800 number, and that's 800-621-3362. Uh, they can also go to disaster survive. I'm sorry, disasterassistance.gov is our website. It's quite user friendly, and they can register there. Uh, we encourage everyone who's had any damage at all to register with FEMA. If they have insurance, that's okay. No insurance. If they're a homeowner, renter, you know, if you've been impacted, uh, we'd like for you to register and let us, the agency, make the determination of whether that you are eligible for any funds. Um, we will be distributing flyers, and I'll leave one of these with you. It uh, gives our website and uh, the 1-800 number. Um, those are being left on doors with uh, houses that we don't see anybody. And I just got word officially that we have a disaster recovery center going to be opening up this Wednesday, the 26th, at your Shaw Elementary School. Mm -hmm. It'll be open 7 to 7, 7 days a week um, indefinitely. And we really encourage folks to go there and sit down in a comfortable environment and talk to FEMA as well. So, any questions? I have a question. Are you giving people, I mean, it's difficult, I'm sure, to give a timeline, but do you give people, you know, is it a month, two months, 
three months? So would you give them a kind of concept of time when things would kick in that they could start purchasing things? And um, once you register, it usually takes, we, we use the um, time frame of seven to 10 business days for an inspector to come out or set an appointment with you to come out and look at your damages. Nothing really happens with FEMA until that inspection takes place. Um, once that happens, everything begins to roll and paperwork begins to, to, to come out to them in the forms of letters or, you know, some people set up an online account. So it can be pretty quickly, um, you know, once that inspector gets out there, especially if they have electronic uh, transfer of funds, they see the money relatively quickly. So basically, though, if one person registers, it's going to take at least three to four weeks realistically to get any kind of money in their pocket? I would not say that, no ma'am. Um, typically, uh, especially if they're not insured and we see that they're eligible through the through the computer system itself, it can generate monies within 40, 48 to 72 oh, really? hours. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, I wanted to express to you guys that um, a lot of folks are displaced and we're having a hard time finding those. So um, as we reach out to folks, we're asking, do you know where your neighbors are and where folks in the apartments were and that kind of stuff. So uh, we're trying our best to find them and get this information to them and help them as much as we can. So it would behoove us to keep putting on social media from the township if you've moved or the police get a hold of you guys or at the shop will probably be the best you'll probably see around that the yes ma'am and and i will say too about the disaster recovery center the more traffic comes in there and stays consistent the longer it'll stay open to help the folks in the area so okay. we will that. be putting up marquee signs um either using the sheriff's or uh, zena townships or a combination of both uh out on camp uh so they'll know that the disaster center is located there okay wonderful any publicity is really good. So. Yeah, and I, I know that one. Uh, that one Facebook has been real popular yeah, with the Tornado yeah, people. So I would say we want to make sure we get that information out on that. Sure. It seems to be a beacon for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. I've made contact with um, the uh, Air Force Base as well. They had some folks there that had uh, damage that lived in base housing, and so they're going to put that out. And that's like a thirty thousand um, capacity social media or newsletter or whatever they send <coughs> out so uh, we're trying to get it out as many ways as we can so and what's the guesstimated time that you long time you'll be here i mean i know till you know, at least a month a couple weeks. um i would project probably three three weeks plus um i have a small team and and we just got another county declared or are ready to go into so they've pulled a couple of people um, they will be leaving tomorrow, so that's going to put us a little farther behind in what we would have been able to do had they been able to stay. But we're going to stay here until we've been everywhere and in the impacted areas and to some degree outside of that because of straight line winds and that kind of stuff. And uh, we keep track of where we've gone and, you know, uh, whether we saw people or not, whether uh, we made contact and we can go back. And so it's really up to the emergency manager for the most part when she and her folks feel like we've done the work we need to do and you know we'll be here till till we're not needed anymore so so what happens <laughs> there's going to be there's going to be one person that just doesn't see this you guys are going to be gone what's going to happen then there's always the 1-800 number and you've got 60 days from the date of the declaration which is um was june the 18th uh, so I believe that puts it around August the 17th um, there that they have time to register. Um, there'll be continuous uh, coverage about the disaster recovery centers and, you know, FEMA and register. And, you know, unfortunately, there's always one or two that just, you know, postpones doing it and procrastinates. And, you know, uh, you can always register late. Uh, you will have to do some documentation of why you didn't register during that 60-day period. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there are other avenues. Usually with uh, FEMA, no doesn't mean no. It, it means we need some more information, and that's what I tell people all the time about denial letters. They're going to get automatically denied if when they um, do their registration and they say that they have insurance. And that's because they've paid for that product and that service, and so... FEMA expects 
that insurance company to try to put them back whole. But if they're underinsured, they can always submit their settlement, submit a contractor's estimate showing what the needs are to repair the home, and FEMA will do a comparison and they can possibly get some assistance after that. And one of the things that uh, I mention um, most often to the emergency manager and the folks that I meet with is have people read the whole letter. Um, the denial comes quick and in the first line you're ineligible or whatever and uh, if they'll read the whole letter it'll tell them more about why and what they might can do and I'll just say again denial no from FEMA usually just means we need more information so okay well thank you for being in our community and if well, we can help you as trustees in any way make you more comfortable here we'd be happy just let us know well i appreciate it. everybody's been so hospitable and and provided us with everything that we've needed so far so appreciate alex he's been a big part of that so Great. thank you all for letting me speak today thank you, thank you. uh-huh I'm Julie Garrett. I'm a public affairs specialist with SBA Office of Disaster Assistance. I actually have a few handouts, so can I just give them to you real quick? Of course. I have given copies. Yeah, yeah. And I gave them copies, so it may be the same stuff. Oh, well, I got a couple of Thank you. Yeah, thank you for allowing me to speak as well. So Martha Faye just explained how FEMA works, and I'm going to explain how SBA and FEMA work together when there's a disaster. It's a little confusing because our name is U.S. Small Business Administration, so people think we only help businesses. But when there's a disaster, we help renters, homeowners, nonprofit organizations, faith-based organizations, large and small businesses, so kind of just about everybody except for uh, farmers. And farmers would go through the USDA if they had damage. So FEMA is telling people who have insurance that they're initially denied. If they are insured and they're underinsured, SBA is, can give them funding towards catching up what they need, that gap between what their insurance settlement is and what their contractor might be charging them. So. FEMA will tell a lot of people to go to SBA and apply. If they do that and they are approved for a loan, they have 60 days to decide to take that loan. They don't have to. They get to choose, of course. And if they are denied, then SBA sends them back to FEMA. We send them back for a program called Other Needs Assistance. So if somebody is told to apply to SBA and they don't, then they're kind of kicked out of the pipeline. So that's a key message to give your constituents that they need to follow directions and follow the process. And if they're told to apply to SBA, just go ahead and, and make that application. So that's, that's really important. So the benefit of our program is that these loans are very low interest, as low as 1.9% for homeowners and renters and 4% for businesses. Homeowners and renters can apply for up to $40,000 for their personal property that's damaged, including their vehicles. So if their car was damaged by the tornado and they haven't gotten a new one yet, they can um, wrap that into their personal um, property loan. $200,000 for the repair of their home or replacement of their home. Businesses can apply for up to $2 million and that can be for economic losses, economic injury, and a working capital loan, or for physical damages. But the combination of those two loans has to be $2 million or less. We process the loans in about two weeks for homeowners and renters. And once they sign the paperwork, the funds are in their bank account within three to five days. So it's pretty fast. That was, I was going to say, because my experience with the SBA process is it's long. Yeah. So this is an expedited one. It, we expedite it at all levels when it's disaster assistance. And these loans, we're purposefully expediting them because we know people really need them. And these loans are direct from the federal treasury. So we're not arranging for you to go through a bank. They're direct from the federal sure. government. 
Um, let's see. There's a lot of kind of perks to the loans. One is that uh, you have 60 days to choose whether to take the loan. And then if you change your mind and say, I don't want it right now, you can reapply for that easily for six months. So let's say somebody um, thinks they're going to get a certain amount for insurance and it comes out to be less than they need, but they don't find out for a couple of months. It's very simple to just turn their application back on and to, to get that funding later. Um, there is a grace period. People don't have to start making the payments for the first four months and 30 days. So about five months from the time you sign your loan paperwork. So that gives you time to start your repairs and kind of get back on your feet before you have to deal with making a loan payment. And then there's no collateral if you borrow 25000 or less. And people really like that because they get nervous about putting a note on their house. Mm -hmm. um, people here in this area can apply for up to 20% additional of whatever their damage is to um, make safety improvements to their home, like to put in a storm shelter or a safe room in their house. And then these loans can also be used for insurance deductibles or fencing or decks, which a lot of times insurance money doesn't cover. So I think here with the tornado and people kind of having insurance, that could be a real perk. So that's pretty much the big picture. Do you have any questions? Julie, would you like to tell everybody where you're working on? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, I should tell you. So if you look at this little flyer, the, green, the blue box tells you how to apply for these loans. But we have people here, they're super nice, our customer service reps, where um, anyone who isn't comfortable putting in an online application or has questions or just wants more detail can go in and sit down and we will walk them through the application process. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. All you need is a government ID and you don't even need your social security card or anything else because we know sometimes people have lost all their property. So that's initially all that's required. We will also, um, when Shaw Elementary opens, we'll be there too. So that'll be seven to seven, seven days a week. We'll have SBA folks there. So you can do it um, online at disasterloan.sba.gov and you can call our 800 number for an application or to ask questions, that's 800. 659-2955, or you can come in and do it in person, which I recommend because I'm a people person. I want to just do it face-to-face -face and ask my questions, and then it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to worry about it timing out online or, you know, messing up something. And, and like, um, like Martha Faye was saying, you really need to read that letter. If, if it's a denial, it might be something little like you did your Social Security number wrong by one digit or you didn't fill something in. So we encourage people to read all the way down to the end. That's a good point. Yeah. Be persistent. Yes, be persistent. Oh, yeah, you can also apply for these um, while you're waiting for your insurance settlement, and then you can assign the settlement monies to pay down the loan. So we often can get money in people's hands faster than the insurance company. Now, you guys have the ability at Shaw for them to come in and do that and do the, do the application all right there, sit there with them? Yes. Yeah, we have people there with laptops who will just take it right right there. It's, yeah, it's right really there. great. That's important because then you can get past that hurdle. Yes. This is coming, but let's scroll down. Yes. So. And the other thing is they can kind of be reassuring. They've been doing this for years. They know the kind of questions people are going to ask. I was just over at the Chamber of Commerce today. We have a center there that's open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And somebody had just come in and they said years ago they needed an SBA loan and it saved their life. And they were, were initially really scared to get that loan and then it worked out so well for them. So, you know, it's a really good loan. There's no points, no fees, no cost. It doesn't do a hard pull on your credit. Like, it's a no-brainer, really. So. Well, thank you for the information. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. If we can help you in any way to be more comfortable or... Thank you. Everybody here has been great so far. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else on that topic, I have a quick question, Ms. Aarons. These, these were done last meeting? They were. Okay, Deborah, you'll have to sign those. All right, moving on. Uh, 
any seeing no citizens desiring to speak we'll move to old business and tornado update thank you board um, we just heard about uh, public individual assistance uh, there's also a pending application with FEMA as well for public assistance uh, that would be reimbursing local jurisdictions um, we submitted all our paperwork everything on Wednesday for the entire county to Green County EMA that was shipped uh, sent to uh, Ohio EMA and then to District 5 FEMA uh, we do have a meeting tomorrow uh, to where FEMA a different team than we met today is going to be coming in and reviewing all the documents um, just give you an update on uh, local jurisdictions um, countywide um, and this is without Xenia's report Cedarville and Ross Township we're still waiting on that they should have that tomorrow um, in regards to the disaster the, and related to the tornado we're at 3.2 million dollars of local government funds being spent countywide um, Beaver Creek Township as of last Wednesday um, was eight hundred and seven thousand dollars and City of Beaver Creek as well is at 1.2 million dollars. Uh, this is an ongoing tally because this includes uh, straight time and any overtime related to debris management. Uh, so that's not it's natural debris. Uh, we're getting a lot of phone calls on construction debris, uh, referring them to their insurance company for construction debris. The county, uh, Green County Engineer's Office, Green County Sanitary Engineering, Environmental Services, City of Beaver Creek, and Beaver Creek Township will not be picking up construction debris uh, we have no place to store it or take it um, as of uh, last week we were close to 30,000 cubic yards countywide uh, for <coughs> uh, which relates to about just over 22,000 tons of debris um, once we if we if and that's the word I use uh, and that's Ohio EMA and Green County EMA if we get uh, a public assistance uh, FEMA declaration uh, we'll be able to receive reimbursement for our overtime expense for our fire department uh, police services through the sheriff uh, some Beaver Creek police services through um, uh, guarding the station the insurance will cover most of that except the deductible will be able to be picked up by FEMA um, and for debris management for public uh, works and the <coughs> public service in, in the city and um, our department out here in the township and the road department uh, will be able to get reimbursed for straight time and overtime for debris management um, now that's not a hundred percent so I always clarify this it's uh, FEMA will pay up to 75 percent mm -hmm. Ohio declaration uh, that we received uh, early on from the governor uh, they'll pick up another 10%. There has been some discussion with our local legislators, state legislators, about uh, both in Montgomery and Green County uh, about potentially asking the legislator to pass to cover the local jurisdictions at 100%. So we'll see if that goes anywhere with our state <coughs> legislator. Also, um, as a part of this, the city of Beaver Creek put out a debris management plan. We did, uh, instead of the city, the township, uh, Green County Engineer's Office, Green County Sanitary Engineering doing separate bid process for debris management. It was decided that uh, one agency, and it is allowed through FEMA, Ohio EMA also approved it as well, that we could put out one RFP for debris management. And this will be, in, we're continuing and slowing down operations in regards to picking up, and we're going to continue to go on for several months, but uh, in regards to other communities that have helped us, whether in the city and the township, uh, we're cities back to normal operations as of today. We were back at normal operations as of Friday. Um, so it'll be our employees continuing to do debris management. So one thing, we got the RFPs back. Uh, just got the information today from the city of Beaver Creek, and they're going to move pretty quick on this. Now, if we get a public assistance, that will include under this bid process uh, big grinders uh, that the city, township, and the county will be able to use to grind up all our debris. The debris is in two locations, environmental services on Progress Drive, or excuse me, um, Greenway Boulevard and, and Xenia, and Russ uh, nature Reserve in Fairborn. Those are the two there. No, I'm sorry, not Russ. CMAX. Thank you. CMAX Reserve uh, that's operated uh, from the Park District. 
up in Fairville. So those are the two locations that we have. So uh, I did add a debris management agreement on the uh, agenda right before the meeting. There was some discussion. We're going to be looking at the bids Wednesday. Uh, and one thing we have to do with the agreement is we have to, by FEMA and Ohio Humane Standards, we have to list the jurisdictions. So not only will it be City of Beaver Creek, but it could be Beaver Creek Township, Green County Engineer's Office, and Green County Sanitary and Engineering. Uh, so what I would just simply need is a, a motion to authorize me to sign that agreement once they, um, and it'd be related to the, obviously the 28. So a simple motion just authorizing me to sign the debris management agreement. Well, I will make a motion to authorize the township administrator to sign for the debris management agreement. Is there, is there a limit? No, there won't be a limit. This will be kind of open-ended depending on the FEMA reimbursement. We're, we won't, most of the equipment that we would uh, be purchasing will be after we get a public assistance okay. uh, declaration. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Thank you, Bordo. Keep uh, up to date on that as well. Um, you did hear from the PI team from FEMA. Um, we met with them this past Saturday for several hours in here. Um, and uh, they are working out of here in their Monday uh, every day. They're going to be working here in the morning to have their staff meetings uh, and in the afternoon for their debriefing meetings. So. Have access to either this room or the emergency operations center. Um, they will be also meeting when the disaster center opens up at Shaw, and uh, all the other agencies will have a presence there as well at Shaw once that opens up Wednesday at 7 in the morning. Are there any questions about the tornado update? No. No. No, no except a huge thank you to everyone that uh, did such a <coughs> wonderful job to fire and roads and everybody. I mean, even though I was on the shelf, I was still in contact with multiple citizens that were glowing praises for all the work in the sheriff's office for everything that our partners were doing out there. So, great job. Thank you, Board. Uh, no new business, so moving on to Sheriff's report. Thank you, Board. Uh, page four of your packet is the Sheriff's Office bi-weekly report. Are there any questions? I had no questions. Well, neither did I. Lots of information as normal. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Next item is on page 17 of your packet. Um, it is time to renew our dental. Uh, the committee uh, took a look at it as well as uh, discussion at the department head level. Um, we did uh, go out through uh, our normal channels, but we also reached out in the packet as well to um, Otarma, because they offer uh, insurance as well. Um, so in your packet, you'll not only see what we normally get from uh, Mr. Polis, but also um, from Otarma. Uh, you'll see that uh, on page 17, um, to stay with Superior Dental uh, was a three 0.99% increase. Um, the committee looked at it as well as the department heads and everybody is recommending to go switch to Delta Dental. Option one, you'll see that's a 12.18% reduction. Same plan, but that's a, also a two year rate lock as well, much like we did with the um, health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So. We are recommending, we've had dental uh, dental in the past, um, and we switched from them probably three or four years ago uh, to Superior. So we are recommending, staff's recommending, as well as the committee is uh, recommending going with option one. There is a motion on page 20. I just had one comment on this on, the, on page 18. It appears, just, to, just because I want to document the Lincoln Financial Option 3 quote, it looks like it was just repeated from the, um, it was the same, exactly the same information as the Delta. Delta Dental, and I'm, I'm thinking that was misrepresented. I'll because I, I cannot that. believe that two companies were exactly the same. I, I got a feeling that that was mistakenly. Sure, that might be a spreadsheet. Cut and paste. Spreadsheet yeah. error. 
and I would like to have that corrected. Uh, sure, I'll check into that. Yeah. There's a motion on page 20. I make a motion to approve option one, Delta Dental, as presented as the township's dental insurance carrier for the planned year beginning July 1st, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2021, and authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Thank you, Lori. On page 21 for biweekly report, are there any questions? I had none. I had none. Looks like it's been uh, busy. the department's very busy. Okay. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 24 is the zoning department's biweekly report. Are there any questions? Well, it looks like we're just tracking slightly behind. But I would imagine lots of permits coming. Four of them stacked up on my desk right now. Mm -hmm. looking for them. I, I have no questions. I have no questions. Okay. Thank you, Morton. Next item is one of the uh, items that I added. Um, Friday afternoon, um, the township network system um, had a complete failure. Uh, it was diagnosed from back to business IT uh, that it was a network switch. And this network switch it was purchased in 2003 and was due to be replaced as a part of the phase two project that was budgeted for this year, which we are working with back to business to gather all the quotes and everything for. Uh, so unfortunately the switch is bad. We did pull it. We put a secondary switch in, a backup switch, uh, which is smaller in regards to speeds. So the network is up and running, uh, but at a slower pace. Uh, I am recommending that we do move forward with uh, going ahead and ordering the uh, network switch before we bring the presentation to the uh, regarding phase two. Uh, we'll just remove the switches from that proposal. Uh, initial quotes that we looked at, it was around uh, 7,500. We budgeted $10,000 in the budget that would be cost allocated. Uh, I'm recommending just to pass a motion today, and I do have a motion here and a blank purchase request um, to go ahead and authorize an amount not to exceed $8,000. And we will go out and get the three quotes, uh, as well as look at uh, GSA rating as well, and any um, state term pricing as well. Sure. So the uh, the backup, it's it's functioning normally. It's functioning, but it's not the appropriate size for our network. It can only tip, typically handle about ten, excuse me, twenty computers. In other words, twenty computers being on the <coughs> network plus the internet that takes up some of the space as well. So. It came up Friday afternoon, and I did notice over the weekend when we were in with the FEMA meeting, a little slow down on things opening up, apps opening up. So um, we are recommending moving forward to go ahead and get the appropriate switch as well. How many computers do we have on the network? Every user has uh, technically a computer. So if they log into a computer, um, they'll have access to the network. So, And we also have the ability to remote in uh, certain employees right now are testing the remote, so that goes through the network as well. So someone at home can log in uh, through what we call remote access, and so that will also. Yeah, how many work. users again? Uh, Ballpark. Uh, over a hundred. Mm. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, nope, I'm good. I make a motion to approve purchase request one zero zero six five, not to exceed the amount of eight thousand dollars for a network switch and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second with discussion, and again, this is gonna then be pulled from the phase two, we're gonna right. do it now. Yeah. So we'll see, actually see a little bit of a reduction in the phase two cost because we're doing that now. Correct, and I will also identify it in the, uh, what we're up to, 17 points of light in the budget package. There you go. Thank that you. it was purchased on this date and Thank what you. that cost was, and I'll let the board know uh, next meeting, what that cost was, what the final cost was. Great. Call, please. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Thank you, board. Um, on page 29 is the bi weekly report, and on that topic, we are working to, to get uh, pricing on phase two and uh, VM license as well. Uh, we plan, it wasn't 
plan until later on this uh, summer to bring to the board. So uh, thank you for approving the network switch. We'll get that up and running. Are there any questions on IT? I have no. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 32 is the biweekly report for the road department. I would like to just kind of mention that uh, I have received several um, phone calls regarding the road department's operation in uh, the township. Um, as soon as they're removing debris, it seems to be the next wave of debris coming to the uh, right of way. Um, and uh, if you've been out into the unincorporated area uh, in the township, you'll see the big difference in the neighborhoods. Um, we're also putting together both the city and the township. We're working on letters of thank you because um, we did share a lot of the same jurisdictions. Uh, I know Fairborn was one that both worked in the township and in the city. Um, Westchester actually came up last week with their media team, uh, did filming of air crews working out in the incorporated area. And, uh, you know, when it unfortunately when it rains, it pours. I know uh, an individual who called me the other day. Uh, who was also going to read out, reach out to our state legislator to let them know how wonderful Beaverton Township was doing. Um, they were had house damage, debris uh, issues, and unfortunately a family member uh, had a medical issue. So I got a phone call about the response from the road department, the response from the sheriff's office, and as well as our fire department all in one house. So I wanted to pass that on to the board. They were very pleased with the entire operation and how nice our crews were. Stayed with them. The sheriff uh, helped the uh, family. Uh, after the medic uh, made a transport, and our road guys were there. Just happened to be there at the, about the same time. So uh, they were very pleased with what the, our operation. We're going to continue to do debris operation. We're constantly evaluating it with the county engineer, the city of Beaver Creek, and Beaver Creek Township, um, and. Uh, we're constantly meeting, so tomorrow is another meeting besides the FEMA meeting in the morning. In the afternoon is the county meeting here at this location where we have discussions about operation. Once operation start, um, tends to slow down, we'll be moving into the recovery phase, uh, which would require Township City and uh, Green County in May. Uh, but at the first couple of meetings, there was 100 people in here, and now we're down to maybe 15 people. So we're we're getting there. We're not there yet. I've been telling people in the community it's going to take, you know, two years to recover from oh, the tornado. Sure. Yeah, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. So, are there any questions for... No, and again, uh, just to reiterate, I mean, you know, I've heard nothing but glowing, glowing comments on the work the township has done. You know, and, and honestly, too, I, I mean, Mr. Harry, that, that comes from your leadership down. I mean, I'm hearing just as good things from <coughs> the interaction of everyone with you, so I thank you for that. I thank our department heads, I thank all our, our, our staff, and how are our troops doing? How is the road department people doing? Are they good? Well, we're good. I mean, this, this week we have kind of backed off the regular hours, so. Getting some yeah. rest. Getting some rest. They are getting some rest. We're trying to give breaks during the day or different days so they aren't doing the same thing they've done for the last four weeks. No. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right, because sometimes when you get burned out is when injuries happen. So I mean, right. we're building that stuff in. Okay, good. good. And fire, we're good. So I know it's been they've been doing a good job out there in the public and uh, sheriff. We're, we're everybody's good there. Good. So I really like all the feedback, positive we've mm -hmm. been getting from everybody. So you know, and everyone else too. You know, Ed and Jan, you know, you guys are doing a great job. So Ford, I do want to pass on. Kind of one complaint that we did receive. Um, Should have done that a minute ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a good complaint. Actually, um, I did meet with a resident, and I've been trying even during the tornado or the next day. Uh, city's doing the same thing, so nothing to take away from but both jurisdictions are doing it. City manager and I went door to door to residents. Staff has been going door to door. The sheriff's been going to door to door. I did come up on one resident, talk to them, and they said, "Geez." Enough's enough. I've met with your sheriff's department. I've met with your road guys. I've met with your fire department. I've met with your zoning department. And now you. And it, it wasn't really a complaint. She was just like, I really appreciate it, but I'm okay. Yeah. So, um, and that's what we want to hear. We want to make sure. And I said, listen, you know, I know we've hit you a couple different ways in regards to meetings and contact. 
but I want to make sure that everybody is taken care of. So, uh, well, and if we're we're a levy based community, and uh, you know, we want to make sure the citizens are aware that we're trying to use their citizen dollars the best we can, and and make sure that it comes back and touches the citizens that are paying for this. So I'm happy to hear. And, and, and I, I mean that's that. positive because when it comes time for those things, that resident's going to remember everyone checked on you. So now I'm sure that she probably wished you showed up with gloves, <laughs> but I mean you know she they're going to remember that, and, and that's that just speaks to the the feedback I've been getting too. Everything's been positive, so mm -hmm. great. All right, I, I had nothing else for road. I didn't either. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 33 of your packet. Uh, first item is request permission to purchase hazardous material training. Uh, we did discover in this last hiring uh, process that our um, community colleges or fire schools are no longer um, providing hazardous material operations training, uh, whether awareness or operations. By the Ohio um, Administrative Code, uh, in the state of Ohio, all of our first responders need to be at least uh, operational, or excuse me, for first responders for police and fire awareness, fire has to do the additional, which is operational. So you'll see the budget justification on page 33 of your packet. Deputy Chief Merckx is here to answer any questions. There is a motion on page 34 to get all our people trained. Will they be going out to training or they're coming here to so here we have an organization coming here, so the training will be done on site. On site. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have anybody that's certified to be able to do this training? Not this level. Um, we can do a lot of the refresher. We can do all of the refresher um, in-house, but because this has the operational component, that's an initial training, it needs to get outside. But then while they're here to get the best bang for the buck, we're also going to pick up all of the refresher too. We'll just do it all at once. But the refresher ongoing will be done in-house by our own people. So is this something that as we go, you know, we, we we historically have tried to not just be the trainees, become the trainers too? Mm -hmm. Is this something that... It's very specialized, um, but we do have a few individuals that are um, um, getting more involved into hazmat. So that is something that we can do. And actually, one of these individuals is a past retiree, um, Lieutenant, lieutenant uh, Rob I Young. Say, we had yep. one lieutenant yep. that was certified mm -hmm. in all that and was teaching. Yep, and he is part of this um, um, program that we're hiring, um, and he'll actually be back to help teach great. some of that under this program. Great. No, that's yep. good. That's a great resource there, for us. Yeah, there's specialized equipment that if we did it in-house, would there be an additional cost for that equipment? With, uh, you would have to have enough level eight suits, which is the type of, I don't know how you described it, but they're, they're wrapped in you know, yeah. plastic, it looks like. Yeah, um, the big you know, suits. It, it, yeah, the big suits, and, and so, and then they have to do certain exercises like mitigate a hazardous material leak. So what this company does, and when you have it, in, you, they used to offer it in fire school, um, you know, they would do, have the practicals and the equipment set up for you to be tested on. Um, we do have everybody at operational, but just to point out, we do um, have technicians, which has been that level up, and the, most of the technicians, I believe, are on the regional hazmat. Yeah, and that's a much higher level. They yeah. they get a lot more involved in it and actually do out do mitigation of of some of the product. Where the operational level can do a little bit of it and and define the safety zones and so forth, but the technician is a much more advanced level. Um, they handle all the equipment and they get actually well operating into the hot zones. No, I have none. I make a motion to approve purchase request 09959 to Miami Valley Safety System for hazardous materials operations and refresher class in the amount of $5,400 and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 35. You might have seen some of this uh, presentation out in the community. Uh, this is the uh, damage assessment area map. Uh, you can see that, uh, and as I've been telling people in the community, uh, of Beaver Creek Township, which includes the city of Beaver Creek, 30% of our community was affected in some way by the tornado. Um, in the map that you see there, it's uh, 14,000, 14, excuse me, 
14 square miles of uh, damage. Now, well, this does not include us to the north in the areas of Bath Township and Fairborn, uh, where on the oh north yeah. side of the storm we saw hail and some straight line winds. Um, so, but this is just related to the immediate affected area by the storm itself. That doesn't include now. I, one thing I forgot to mention, and, and uh, FEMA forgot to mention, they're not only looking at Beaver Creek, Beaver Creek Township. They're going all the way out to Jamestown, uh, Yellow Springs, Cedarville, Fairborn, and Bath Township, and Wright Pat, uh, who all got that uh, northern side of the storm mm -hmm. or more wind and hail yeah. damage. Mm -hmm. Two and a half, three inch hail. Yeah. We did add another, um, as a part of the tornado, not in Beaver Creek Township, um, but another house that was destroyed. It was a lightning strike in um, I believe Miami Township or Yellow Springs. The house was destroyed. Uh, so if you look at the county numbers, you'll see another number go up. Some of the, that number uh, continues to change in regards to destroyed uh, as we see engineers coming in and evaluating some of the homes. So it might have had major damage, and then their structural engineers are saying, no, it's destroyed, we have to tear it down. So that's yeah. a, it's a fluid number. So, um, and the county auditor has the damage assessment uh, software loaded. So if you go to Green County's auditor's website, uh, you can look at the debris, or the uh, damage assessment. It has that, if you zoom out to the entire county, it shows the entire county. If you zoom into a neighborhood, you'll see the numbers drop, because it's only focused on there. Also, if you click on the map, uh, the GIS map, it'll have a before and after picture. So, um, and that's live for the uh, community to look at as well. And we also have on page 36 the financial impact as well. Mm -hmm. And this is also a fluid number based on um, when those numbers are changing. Any questions on that? I don't have any questions. No, and I, I have one question back on the hazmat real quick. So uh, w we've identified a problem coming from the schools. So I'm assuming we've integrated into our standards and procedures to anybody else. We're going to get that new, then we're going to get that up front and build this. Yeah, down. one of the things we're going to ask is, you know, are you a hazmat awareness or operational? And if, you know, we choose to uh, hire that employee, then uh, I can tell you what, like, I think the last two hires had it, but the one in the big group before, and, and like half the group don't have it. So, okay. um, so yeah, it'll be included into one of the things. So then we'll have, we'll know that cost coming in, and we'll have to send it to operations. Yeah, and the thought is moving forward that probably our hires might be one, two at a time. We're not sure that we'll see what we've seen in the past. Obviously, on a regular no, basis. No, but we've Great, identified but this yeah. now. I want to make yeah, sure yeah. that we put it in our, Part of our procedures listing. book that it's mm -hmm. a check. Yeah. Right. We check that box. Yeah. Yep. The fire school used to entail <coughs> not only the one and two uh, levels of firefighting, also included pump operations, uh, hazardous uh, materials training, awareness, and operational. Now, because we, all the standard changes nationwide, it is strictly just fire, fire school. They do talk a little bit about pumps, but they don't come out at school having been trained on pump operations, you know, working the pump panel, driving the fire engine. So uh, we'll, what schools in Ohio are saying is, well, we'll let your fire department handle that, you know, because everybody does it a little bit different, different size hoses, those types of things. So it's just even more important for folks to, you know, especially the youth, to get in our explorer program. So yeah. get that up front. Now, are our explorers getting the hazmat stuff too? No, not they're not a part of that. Um, but we have mentioned to them that they need to look at classes as a part of. It. They'll get at least awareness, I believe, in one A or level one. Yeah. But they're not going to get operational. So we've told at least the eight that we have now that they need to start looking at. They it. should be considering that. I went, actually, I just walked by, coming over to set up for a meeting. We got an explorer in training on the ladder right now. Okay. So. All right. And then on page 37 of the bi weekly report, are there any questions for Chief Mark? I have nothing except thank you to Station 64 for their assistance to me on the 6th. My family and I greatly appreciate it. I'm um, glad that you're doing okay. Thank you, board. That's all I have. Thank you, Chief Mark. Thank you. All right. Uh, legal? Nothing.
Ms. Aarons? Nothing. All right. Uh, MVR PC? No meeting. No meeting. Uh, no technical meeting either, right? No that tech. Was canceled. That was canceled as well. Okay. Uh, regional planning is tomorrow. Yes. I cannot go. I'll be there. You'll be there? Okay. Uh, we know health is not yet. Any update other than what you've presented already, Mr. Zahari, for the city manager, superintendent? Uh, just staying Andrew and I uh, seem like we're meeting daily over there. <laughs> so um, I think tomorrow or Wednesday we'll probably cancel our monthly meeting since we're at meetings every day together. So we'll be at two meetings tomorrow together. So most of that is focused on tornado. Uh, superintendent, um, we have met with the schools in regards to the uh, disaster center being opened up at Shaw. Uh, I just want to thank the schools. They, they came and said, yep, whatever you need. Uh, they sent, they've been sending staff to the county EMA meetings. Um, so we'll, we'll be ready to open up uh, Wednesday morning at 7. Uh, right Pat Advisory Board? Nothing in regards to Right Pat. I did send out some information regarding um, the, and this is a, there's a public or a press release from Green County County <coughs> Engineering regarding some of the issues going on between the city of Dayton and Montgomery County. Um, it's been in the press. Uh, there are residents both in the city and in an unincorporated area of the township that do receive water from the city of Dayton through a Montgomery County water system. Uh, we did put that information out. We posted it on township. The city posted it as well. Um, in regards to water as well, um, one thing that the staff is now involved with, uh, which includes fire, zoning, and myself, um, is we are looking at a well heritage protection plan for the wells. There are 14 in Beaver Creek Township, um, and I believe two or three more planned for uh, the, the community. So we are working through that process. Um, that will be a long process. Once there is a plan in place for a wellhead protection plan and an area and boundary, that will be presented to the city council and the board of township trustees and the county commissioner for approval. So that was one of my questions under my time. My time was the PFAS. Mm -hmm. So you're saying we have no issue? According to the press release, they are constantly monitoring it. Green County Sanitary uh, Engineering is constantly monitoring it. They're also monitoring the situation between the county, uh, Montgomery County, and uh, City of Dayton. So as of the last test they ran, none of the presidents in the unincorporated area of the township or the city of Beaver Creek, um, and the, all the numbers are on the website um, so in the press release. So I encourage everybody to go to the county's website to look at that press release. We also put it out on our social media. Um, the county is looking at, as a part of the, of course, you know, during the tornado, we also, the city of Dayton lost power, which then required another boreal advisory um, for a lot of residents in Montgomery and Greene County. The county did say at one of the county EMA meetings in regards to recovery, uh, the county commissioners are looking at putting a plan together uh, to be off Dayton Montgomery County system within 24 months. Um, so that also requires an increased capacity of the wells in Beaver Creek, i.e. the reason for the additional wells. Um, and it's gonna require in the Sugar Creek area a water tower. So that's the plan is to, so that the Green County residents, the city township, Sugar Creek township, uh, will be coming off the Beaver Creek water system. Now that's all subject to change based on engineering and everything else, mm -hmm. land acquisition, et cetera. All right, but right now our wells are? Our wells are fine, yes. The okay. Beaver Creek Township, the sanitary engineering wells that are in the township, uh, the, when I say township, that includes the four that are in the city of Beaver Creek. Um, they are fine. Because so especially the wells, too, the wells we have are some of the highest producing wells in the region. Right. And they're not even really near capacity yet. They're at capacity. They're at capacity right they're now. They're at capacity. So with the additional, uh, and Ed, correct me if I'm wrong on some of this, but 
uh, with the additional uh, water line that's going from Beaver Creek out to the eastern part of the county, we're at capacity. So that's why they're uh, talking about adding the additional uh, wells to increase the capacity. So not only manage what we have, but have that additional capacity and to anticipate getting uh, the dependency up and Dayton water and Jackson and some of the things. And I would encourage us also too to, I mean, we've got an expert in the field in the township at He's BDA. On the He's on if the Brent's committee. on the committee, He's good. Committee. <laughs> good. If Brent says we're good, we're good. Yeah. He is on the committee. So uh, nothing with Wright Pad. Uh, of course, that kind of relates to the city of D Dayton issue as well, but uh, we haven't had a meeting to discuss that. Okay. Uh, Green County Township Association. I could not attend the last one. We had a, I think we spoke about it mm -hmm. at the last one. Right. You did? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I would like, at this point, I'd like, I would like to thank Mr. Um, Eric, <laughs> Amarin, for attending so many of the MVRPC meetings, the technical training, and some of the other ones that so keeping us aware of what's <coughs> going on in, in the whole community. I, I'm happy to see that he signed up for a lot of these, and I appreciate that. Well, he, he doesn't just attend. I mean, he's. He's a vital participant mm -hmm. in the meetings. I mean, every meeting I'm in where Ed's at, Ed's the one talking. <laughs> so, I mean, we are very blessed to have his knowledge and expertise here. Uh, uh, investment, Mr. Kretz isn't here. Uh, Ms. Aarons, are there any update on that? I'm not involved with it. Okay, so none, all right. Uh, Ms. Wallace, anything for the board? No, I have no other comments. Okay, I, my only comment was gonna be on the, the PFAS and uh, again to thank all of our staff for such a wonderful job the last month. So really, uh, really amazing our efforts. So good teamwork. Uh, with that, if we have nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded at 157. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Thank you everyone.